I'm Terry Denson, president of the Florida Watercolor Society. And this is the FWS 49th annual exhibition. We have today the critique of that exhibition by Michael Reardon, our 2020 judge and juror. Uh, we gave Mike Cole the excruciating job, I think, of saying, okay, here are 618 qualified entries. Pick 100. He did an admirable job, especially as far as time went. Um, I was quite, we were all quite impressed with it. Um, the exhibition is currently online on the Florida Watercolor Society website, which is floridawatercolorsociety.org. And it's being shown both physically inside the Lipa Ratner Museum of Art and is a link on the museum's website as well. And I'm going to go ahead and shut up, turn it over to Michael, because he has 100 paintings to go through and make a comment or two on within two hours or less. We'd like to save a few minutes of that time at the end of it for questions from you. Uh, if you have some questions, enter them by hitting the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen, not the chat, because we don't pay attention to chat. And then towards the end of the exposition, ex the critique of the exhibition, um, we'll read the questions to Michael and see what kind of comments he has. But if he has covered it during the uh, discussion of the paintings, perhaps you can remove it. So without further ado, here's Michael. Good afternoon, I guess it is, here in California. It's just beginning afternoon. Um, I first, before I get started, really want to express my thanks to the Florida Watercolor Society for asking me to jury the show, and especially for all the people behind the scenes. They, they created such a flawless process that it made my job much easier to do. And organizing 618 entries is, is really no small feat. Um, I'm also quite honored to curate such a highly regarded exhibition. When I first reviewed all of the entries, it became quite clear that my job was going to be very, very difficult to do. And like in every exhibition, sadly, many beautiful paintings aren't included in the show. To those who didn't get in, you have no reason for self-doubt. I can assure you that many deserving paintings had to be excluded. Yet the 100 artists who were selected for the show should be very pleased. After my final review, I was both a bit stunned and, and gratified by the high quality of all of the pieces. It truly is a stellar show. To make my final cho choices, I, I used a few filters. First, because I had a pretty eclectic taste, I didn't let any genre or approach affect my decision. And second, I tend to favor paintings that take a novel approach to a subject. And third, a painting just had to be very well done. And I realize this is subjective, but each painting had to have impeccable technique, a strong composition, and a compelling narrative. But the final bar is that a painting had to have some kind of emotional resonance. Ultimately, it was the paintings that best spoke to me that were honored with inclusion. I also want to say for those who saw the video, my video on, on Monday, which had some technical difficulties, um, Ron Malone did some wizardry and it is now quite, quite impressive. So if you were a little disappointed on Monday or would just want to see it again, I, I certainly encourage you to go uh, on the website and, and check out my video. You can actually see what's going on this time. All right. Um, Shall we get started? We have got, and I also want to read what, what Terry said. Um, you know, when you have 618 entries and only 100, that means 518 beautiful paintings can't be included. So uh, it really was, really was a difficult decision. All right. Um, you're going to see as I go through here, you know, I, I, I mentioned my filters, but sometimes other paintings just have other qualities that I, I want to talk about. And this was one of them. 
you know, sure, it's, uh, you know, it's a painting of peacocks, but it's this abstract quality of this painting that just always grabbed me. I have to admit, the, the uh, peacock on the right reminded me of Big Bird a little bit, but that wasn't really what go. But I just love the swirling patterns that are, that, that are created throughout this painting. It's, uh, it's really, really quite striking. Uh, next. Ah, uh, shadows, <laughs> or reflections, I should say. Actually, what, what grabbed me about this painting, one, it was just, it, it's difficult to do a night scene. And um, that turquoise blue in the distance, juxtaposed with that gold, golden light on the, uh, on the right-hand side, just uh, really made, the, for me anyway, made, made the painting really vibrate. And I also thought it was pretty gutsy to have uh, more than half of your painting be uh, be asphalt, but the reflections are really, really, really well done. Uh, next. Well, you know, I, I mentioned earlier about abstract patterns, and I have to admit, when I first I didn't I didn't see the titles on these, and so actually, when I first looked at this, I, th I thought it was uh, onions, but does it it doesn't really matter that it's coconuts because for, for me, when I'm looking at a painting, it's that it's that patterning that. Um, grabs you or doesn't grab you. And this one I did, I, I, I particularly liked all, all, all of the twine. I think without the twine, it wouldn't be quite, su quite as successful. Um, and also just a play of warms and cool uh, colors. Uh, next. Uh, this is one of my favorite paintings. Um, I tend to favor paintings that really suggest rather than spell things out. I mean, I, I'm really impressed with people who do realistic stuff. But I think doing this kind of work successfully is very, very difficult to do. And the expression on the woman's, uh, on, on the right's face is just priceless. And there's also something to a painting like this that it would have been successful had it just been her. But the inclusion of the other figure behind her actually adds a certain tension to this painting that it wouldn't have had otherwise. Um, but just a wonderful use of color and, and pattern. Um, a terrific composition. Uh, th next. Uh, well, I'm going to say one word about abstracts. Um, you know, one of the things I have to watch myself when I'm juring is not to include too many abstracts because my tendency is actually to include them all. I am really, really drawn to them. So actually, one of the, in this show, I had to go, the, go at the end and kind of take a few out because there were just too many of them. I think, they're, I, I think part of the reason, for me anyway, is that they, um, there's a certain, you need to use your imagination, interpretation. It's not, not all spelled out. Um, and paintings like this one, there's a certain mystery to it that... Um, is, is really draws me. And then now I see the, the title compliments. And, and I think one of the other things, about, uh, one, one reason I, I chose this one was that again, not dissimilar from the night scene, there's that turquoise blue in the middle with that kind of orange red gold next to it. And I think that really makes those colors really make the whole painting vibrate. Uh, next. Yeah, well, you know, I, I got my architecture degree and I also have to watch myself not to include lots of architectural paintings. Although I have to say, I think I'm a little more critical of art, architectural work than uh, I am of other things. This one though, the lighting is just absolutely fantastic. It's one of my favorite favorite places in Rome. I've never seen these, these churches painted this way. Um, but the, you know, I mentioned also sometimes about having two things in a painting or two Main, you know, two subjects and the and the tensions that created, especially if the one on the left is lit and the one on the right is just barely lit. It's just a, it's a it's a, it's a painting that just really glows. It's very 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 well done. Uh, next, <laughs> well, you know, what can I say? A troll doll. Um, but you know, the funny thing is about it. I, I thought, well, I can't just put in a troll doll. But it's the way she did it um, that is, makes it so effective. The fact that it's kind of on that string, the hair is cropped, you, you've got that long string leading your eye into it. It's so off balance. It's, um, you know, so a simple painting of a troll doll would not be enough, but this is really, really nicely, nicely composed. Uh, next. 
again, one of those abstract paintings that just kind of drew me in. Um, I, I can't even tell you why or what it is. I mean, the colors are really luscious. Um, there's kind of a cruciform pattern, but uh, I'm not sure what it is. It's a painting that I, I could stare at for, for hours. It was this, and this was one, one of them that really, really, really caught my eye. Uh, next. <laughs> I had the good fortune last week on the one-on-one -on -one to, meet, to meet Barbara, and we talked quite a bit about this painting. Um, to me, it, it is so, it's, it's like a classic storybook painting or something like that, but uh, not Maxfield Parish, but one of the old time uh, book illustrators would have done. I mean, I just love the way the, the book is all kind of, the pages are all floppy and, and, and just the composition is fantastic. I mean, the, if you look at the Mona Lisa, it's got this wonderful triangular composition and this one has the same kind of thing. It's really, it's really a masterful piece. And obviously, sometimes when, you, when people are doing portraits, you can usually tell that they really care about their subject. And you can really tell that she really, really cared about this, as it turns out, it's, it's her granddaughter. Next. Okay, I think I mentioned patterns here a little bit. And the one reason that I really was drawn to this painting was that just pattern of all of those palm leaves. But it wasn't simply that. There was a couple of other things going on. One is that, that, that um, the painting is lit from the right. And so the bleached um, leaves on the right-hand side really kind of convey that sense of light. And then you had these strong red verticals, you know, the, as, a, as a counterpoint to all of these flowing leaves. Um, it really, uh, yeah, I, I love this painting. Uh, next. Well, this is actually similar to the first painting we saw of the peacocks in, in, in a funny way in that there is a subject, but the, the way she had, and the, I mean, the flower is beautifully painted, but it's the background that really just kind of captured my attention. You could take out the flower even, and I think it would be a successful painting. Um, and just a wonderful use, again, of throwing those little reds and oranges in to make the greens kind of pop and then tie into the flower. It's really a well-considered, um, you know, fan fantastic floral painting. Uh, next. Well, here's another one of patterns. You know, when I looked at this one for a long time, I was just like, I was flowing around. And I wasn't, wasn't quite sure what it, was, what it was. And then when I saw, finally saw the title here, title flows, I, of course it's water. Um, but it was such a wonderful way of um, portraying water I really like, I mean, as you probably will notice as we go through this, I really like paintings that suggest things rather than really tell you. And once you know, the, the, the water, the tidal flow helps me a little bit, but it's just wonderful blues and turquoises with those little hints of uh, violet. Really, really fantastic. Uh, next. Okay. You know, I, I have, the other thing I have to watch myself and when I'm jurying is not to put in too many portraits. Um, I, I'm usually quite drawn to them. And it's, I think it's just the human element partly. But this one has such mystery with the daring kind of way of lighting her face um, with the bright eye lit and the, and the hair behind silhouetted. Um, and, and to paint a face almost all in shadow is quite challenging to do. Um, so I really love the mystery of this one. Uh, really a fantastic painting. Uh, next. Well, you know, what can I say? I, I, I love the fish. <laughs> I know it's not very sophisticated, but um, I, I just love the, the way the fish is kind of looking back at you. But, I, I, but the composition of this is kind of, you know, um, deceptively simple. There's actually quite a, the, the fish being off-centered, the wonderful wave, wavy pattern of the, uh, of the uh, sea. I'm not quite sure what they are, but um, of the plants. But I particularly like the way she handled the bottom uh, of the painting. I love it again, when things are kind of suggested and by having this suggest down here, it makes the fish really kind of jump outside, jump around. And just the, the fish was beautifully painted. Um, next. 
Yeah, well, this is this one is so strong. It's it's it just kind of shows that someone who really knows what they're doing with abstracts, and just use you know, there's a couple ways of looking at this painting. One is just by looking at the negative space, the whites. I mean, they create a certain pattern, and if you just kind of invert it, it would work. The fact that there's a tulip in it is almost incidental. I mean, that has how I feel. Maybe um, Pat feels differently. But, um, but just look at the energy of the brush strokes uh, it, it, and just the well-considered um, placement of everything. It's really, um, I mean, that, that on the upper left-hand side with the, that brush stroke is just so strong, setting off the, uh, off the tulip. Uh, next. Ah, yeah, well, this one I, I was a little bit nervous at first because I thought, well, you know, is there, am I just reacting to the red? And then I looked at the pattern of blacks and then I looked at the pattern of the white and metal. And then I saw that there's a figure in there. I had no idea when I, when I was first looking at this, I was just looking at the shapes there's a figure in there and uh, you can see her head and her body and her hands, um, which I actually just added a special, a special element to this painting for me because it's not so obvious. And it's just a wonderful use of, uh, of watercolor. I mean, doing reds like this is really difficult to do. Uh, next. Well, I have great admiration for anyone is willing to um, be patient and paint, you know, cut crystal and lace patterns. Um, I, my hat's off to them. And so I, I really wanted to honor this painting just as for the, someone who really, really cared about it. I mean, what's, what's special about it, of course, is that the, uh, the crystal reflect, refracts the light in different ways. Um, but this one was also particularly strong because the composition and, and it was pretty obvious. There, there was a story behind it. I mean, the grapes and the wine and that wonderful triangular uh, composition. Uh, next. You know, sometimes when you're, when you're during a show, there are paintings that just kind of jump out at you. And this one did every time I saw it. And I was trying to figure out why, because in a way it's so, it seems it's seemingly so simple, but there's a real tension in this one. Um, and it's partly because of the legs, it's partly because of that beak hanging out and the and the uh, branch that it's sitting on. And the fact that it, it does kind of feel off balance and going to, uh, uh, going to fall off that, that, that branch. Um, and, you know, the lead, it, it's just beautifully painted too, but, it, but it is, sometimes it goes to show that um, sometimes the simplest subjects are really the, the strongest. Uh, next, uh, garlic. Well, for those who saw my demonstration, um, I talked a little bit about how I really like watercolor that just is watercolor and doesn't, you know, just kind of lets the, the paint flow into each other and, and let it do the one thing that watercolor does better than any other media. It just does that flowing and blending that is just unparalleled. Um, so it was partly just the beautiful way this one was painted that, that really attracted me. But then also just the abstract shapes and those little square little rectangles of the, of the, of the plate. Um, really just a, a luscious painting, uh, best garlic painting I've ever seen for sure. Uh, next. Well, again, to not get, to reiterate how you can just make a bunch of spots and it reads as a painting. Um, I mean, I'm not really a pointillist necessarily, but I really, really like it when paintings are distilled to their essential elements as this one is. I mean, you just kind of look around and just little spots, but it tells you exactly where it is. It's got a wonderful sense of light and use of color. Actually, I, I'd love to know how big this one is. No, so next, next, go on, I'm sorry. You know, um, <clears throat> in many, many exhibits, there are, many floral paintings. And, um, you know, it's something I think that watercolor is particularly good at, which is, you know, it's just a wonderful subject. But occasionally you see one that where they've really rethought the whole thing. And this is one of them. Um, by really focusing in and cropping, so it just becomes a number of abstract shapes as opposed to a flower against a field. Um, 
I think it's just much more compelling than showing the whole thing and these lots of the imagination. But the central part of it is just, um, I don't know, it, it's so evocative and um, it's just a wonderful sense. I mean, technically it's just a, a, a tour de force really. Uh, next. You know, sometimes it's just, it's, a, it's just a matter of how you arrange the figures. Um, this is se seemingly so arbitrary, but it really, I, don't, I don't think it really is. Um, there's so many things I really love about this painting, and it's the interaction of these, of these five characters, plus that person who's kind of in the, mysteriously in the background. And, um, I mean, I like this guy on the right-hand side. I mean, his belly is classic. But just the, the subtle use of color is really fantastic. It's got this kind of nighttime view, I mean, nighttime light. But, but notice that green in the doorway. It just, I think it makes all of the oranges really begin to vibrate. And that little splash of blue on a curtain back there, similar kind of effect. Um, and just a really wonderful arrangement of figures. Uh, next. Next. Yeah, well, um, I think it's because of Florida. I'm not going to, maybe, I, I, but there were many, many paintings of birds um, submitted and it made it a little bit difficult to choose one or the other because there were really many, many exceptional paintings. Um, this one I was drawn for a couple, by a couple things. One was really just, I mean, look at that eye. Just look at the, really the care um, and pa uh, painting all of the, uh, the feathers. But what really grabbed me was the background. One thing I really love to do is paint water. And um, just the way this water the, was painted, um, the background reflecting in the water, it just told you where this was, some kind of swampy um, woodland of some type. Um, but it's just, you know, even if you took the bird out, there's some really wonderful areas just in the background by itself that make a fantastic painting. Uh, next. Uh, well, I mentioned some earlier about letting watercolor be watercolor. I mean, I think this is flowers. I'm not really sure. It just doesn't really matter. Um, it's just a real free use of watercolor and letting it kind of splatter. And there's a few little details in there that kind of imply that there's flowers, but just a wonderful, you know, just beautiful um, and just letting some of those drips become I don't know what they are but they it just shows that the watercolor is just kind of falling down the page um, and just that, that wonderful simple di diagonal from left to right just it's, it's, with that one one little hint going up on the left hand side of uh, really beautiful uh, next this is a painting I looked at several times trying to figure out what was going on because I, when I first looked at it, I thought it was an abstract. And then I looked more closely and realized that there were the boats that were there. And it was, these, was, was, it was the use of these whites that kind of seemed like kites flying through the, through the whole painting. I mean, look at the area in the background. It's just an arrangement of shapes. So th this is kind of a fun one in that, that, that there is a real abstract quality to it, yet there is a story here of these uh, of all these boats on this uh, canal of some type, or river. Um, just, it's uh, an exceptional composition. Uh, next. <laughs> well, I know I did the troll doll and I did this one now too, but, um, you know, the funny thing about this one, I, I, meant, I mentioned I like portraits some, sometimes, and, and then this one was such a funny portrait. It told a funny little story. And I thought whoever did this has a great sense of humor. But, you know, that's not enough for it to get, get, it get in the show. Then I looked at it very closely, and I, I would love to know how he created that texture on the, uh, on the boy back there. I, it really does have that feeling of that kind of cloth. Um, it's really, you know, I also mentioned earlier about having two things in a painting and it's saying when you have two things, they can create tension and sometimes they, they work together. And in this case, they really work together. It's, a, it's really just a fun painting. And, and just to also, it's just a great idea. Uh, next. 
you know, also I mentioned earlier, sometimes you go through initially looking at all the paintings and this one I just knew immediately was um, going to be in the show. Um, it is, and I mentioned earlier also about cropping, cropping elements so that they just become a grouping of um, abstract shapes. I, I mean, I, there, there is really only what, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five shapes, six shapes in this painting. There's very, very few. Yet, um, and, and I think that really strengthens, strengthens the composition. But it really is that 411, I'm not sure what, that, what, what that's for. And the fact that it's a cow is kind of almost incidental. It, this is an abstract painting with that wonderful red splash there. Um, very, very strong. Uh, next. Patterns, I mean, this is, this is, you know, you could almost look at this one in, at, in black and white, and it would still have the same, I think for me, a visual impact. There's that area kind of in the right center that I could stare at for, 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 for a long time. Um, there was so much going on in this painting. Yet, but I should say though, that the use of color is really subtle. There's that green and all these wonderful purples. And it's just really, to me, you could turn it upside down, it would still be an effective painting. Um, Really, really beautifully done. Uh, next. You know, sometimes I, I really like novel ideas. I mean, when you're going through a show, sometimes there's something that you've never seen before, and this was one of them. Um, I'm not quite sure what these are. Christmas ornaments, Easter eggs, I don't really know. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter. But the patterns within each one and, and the, that dark black background makes it feel like it's uh, illuminated from the inside. So I spent quite a while just kind of looking at all these various patterns in, in, the, in these balls or eggs or whatever they are. Uh, really, really gorgeous. Uh, next. This is a special painting for me. I, you know, I looked at this one quite a while and that was, you know, again, I, I like portraits and this one was so expressive in the way that the, the paint was put on, applied, you know, that, that orange little spot there though, kind of without it, it would be a good painting, but that orange spot really just kind of supercharged all of those turquoises and blues and without it, it wouldn't be nearly as successful. And the hair, the hair is just absolutely fantastic. Not to mention a wonderful expression. Uh, next. Yeah, well, um, this was one that I have to admit, I looked at for a long time and just one loved at all the swirls and the movement and how it did kind of dance around. And then I finally saw the title and saw Swing and looked at it some more. I didn't see those two figures in there at all and, until I saw the title. And now, that, now I can't not see them. But for the longest time, I didn't see them. So I, I'm assuming you're seeing them. But if you're not, just look at it a little more closely. It's really, I, I just love this kind of energetic, um, just, just the sheer energy in this painting. And the colors really are luscious. Uh, next. You know, using a, using a walkway into a painting is really a, a, a classic device. And, and sometimes it's overdone, but this one I think really just kind of led you in into the mystery of this forest. And partly what set this one apart too was just the, the rendering of all of those greens and the, the textures um, in, the, uh, in all the shrubbery. But you know, I think what really made the all the difference was that pink. I mean, who would think about using pink on the wood? But it really, again, it's that super excitement, supercharged color um, that really makes the whole, all the greenery really sparkle. Uh, next. Yeah, you know, again, I mentioned I, I, I favor portraits and I have to say that I have kind of a cardinal rule, don't let the cute ones get in the show. <laughs> and this, because it just kind of tugs your heartstrings, but this one, I just couldn't, I couldn't resist. It is so beautifully painted. Um, again, it was, in a way, it's like the woman with the Light, the light on her right eye. I mean, this is a similar way where the most of the face is in shade, 
but the hair is just beautiful. The expression is fantastic. The mouth is beautiful. Um, and one thing that I, that I often like about portraits is, and I talked to several of the people during the one-on-ones who are doing this, and if you're listening right now, uh, look at that background. The fact that it's so simple and light, it makes the figure really, really stand out. If it's not necessary to put in a background, it really, um, it's really best to leave it out. But this is really, I mean, really a, a sensitive painting. Next. Yeah, another one that t- kind of tug- tugged at my heartstrings a little bit when I first looked at this one was um, I felt so, felt so sorry for her. But then I, you know, after I have to look at it just as a um, as a composition, and it's got this wonderful composition. It's really kind of subtle. Um, you know, triangles are really one of these things that really help usually tie a painting together. And it's, to me, it's pretty obvious where that triangle is. Um, and there's just some, there's there's a you know there, there's also a story here, and it's it's not just a painting of a woman's you know I, I guess she's stringing green beans. I didn't quite know what she was doing, but um, it's really a special painting. It really kind of um, tell, tells a, tells a story. Uh, next, <laughs> again, one of my favorite paintings in the entire show. Um, I, I called them the three graces. I, I, um, I just love their expressions. The, the, there's just this, and the patterns in, the, in their shirts and that funny little background p- patterns. Um, I really um, am t- totally enchanted by this one. And the woman, especially on the one on the right with the cigarette, just staring at you. Um, and those coffee cups kind of floating in space. I just thought this was really absolute. This, this, one, this one's uh, definitely museum quality in my book. Uh, next. Um, I, I'm also a, a bicyclist, so I, I always have to watch myself not to put in too many bicycle paintings. But this is one I thought was such a fantastic approach. I've mentioned on many of the other paintings how you crop something so that it's especially something that's very, very familiar to you and just make this wonderful arrangements of shapes. And that shadow is just to die for. It really, I mean, it tells you that, a bicycle, that it's a bicycle more than the bicycle it does itself. And I really love the rustic, uh, rusty kind of quality of that fender. But it's really that just very, very, very strong vertical composition that really makes this painting. And again, like, notice that kind of turquoise-ish color against orange. Um, it's really kind of be a special combination. Uh, next. Yeah, just one of the most wonderful um, abstracts. Um, yeah, I'm looking at Remembering Zion. I didn't know what the title was, but I did kind of feel like something in the desert, but I wasn't quite like, sure. I didn't quite know what these were, but it really didn't matter to me. Um, but it's really a very strong the cruciform. We've seen a couple of cruciforms today. Um, composition and just a wonderful application of the paint. Very, very evocative. And, and also that little, blood, just a little bit of that black calligraphy just adds, adds so much. Uh, next. Yeah, what a fantastic painting. Just absolutely uh, masterful. Um, very, very limited palette, yet it still kind of glows. Um, it, the, the patterning in her shawl is just fantastic, the way she, the, the light is handled. And again, it's, it, all of these elements have been kind of broken into, into simple shapes and arranged. Um, I mean, notice the, the, the woman in the background, it's her hand that's covering something, the, the reds and the blues and the blacks. It's, it really adds a lot. There is, that, there is that strong triangular composition in this one as well, which mirrors her hat. Next. Yeah. Again, I, I, I just thought this, this portrait was just so exceptional. Um, I, I, know, I also didn't know what it was until I saw the title, that it was she's, she's eating applesauce. Um, yeah, I thought it was a pretty kind of daring, actually, to have her um, hand block her face. But the more I looked at it, the more I thought this actually helps. 
Um, I mean, if you look at, if you just squint your eyes and just look at the composition of shapes, it is really, really, really well considered. I mean, the fact that it's a very beautifully painted face um, and hands, um, and there's a story of eating the applesauce or eating something at a produce market, but uh, it's really wonderful. And look at the lower right-hand corner. I mean, it gets kind of lost, but it really is one of the most beautiful areas of the entire painting. And I, I mentioned earlier, sometimes if you put things that are kind of fuzzy next to things that are, you want to be sharp, it'll make the things look sharper. Um, one of those little contrast things that uh, I think about in painting. Um, next. Wow, well, this one's, this one, um, yeah, this one's special. Um, I, again, could stare at this one for hours. There, I, I just, I, I know there's a story here and or many stories here. Um, I see something about Leonardo da Vinci and Letters from the Edge. I, I you know, all the gears, I, I'm, I think that there, that there's, there's something to this, but I just love this, uh, the patterning, especially in the upper hand, left hand corner and, and the way those gears are handled, just the application of the paint. It's really an exceptional piece, really exceptional. Uh, next. You know, this one's also deceptively simple. You know, I, I, when I was going through it, I kept looking at it. There's something about this. And I think it is partly just the rope. It's beautifully painted. I mean, the, the, the coconuts are just um, luscious. And, but, but I think the one thing that's a little not so obvious is that background and those diagonals in the background. I think they add a lot. If you can imagine this without it, it would, it would be okay. But I think it's really those diagonals that kind of tie everything together. Plus the beautiful way that what, the rope kind of leads you through the painting. Um, really a beautifully composed painting and just exceptionally well painted. Um, next. <laughs> you know, sometimes when there's just something juxtaposed with something else, again, this, this, it, it, uh, it can be a little bit jarring because I first wasn't quite sure what was going on here. But then I just started looking at that butterfly and look how beautifully painted that butterfly is. And uh, are actually both butterflies, but especially the, the main one. Um, and I got in the show mostly, not, not partly because of that, but also just because of this wonderful arrangement of shapes um, with that little black triangle there in the middle. Um, it, and that splash of red up there. It's just really, um, you could you could hang this one upside down sideways and it would still be effective no matter how you uh, you hung it um, very nicely done next wow yeah um <clears throat> i stared at this painting for a very long time trying to figure out what was going on because you see that chain link fence and at first i thought it was a recycling dump maybe, maybe it is or some kind of dump and then you see some kind of space shuttle there that's kind of coming out of it and then you look at the background and then it's some kind of town. And so, you know, sometimes when their paintings are a little ambiguous and then maybe it wasn't intentionally ambiguous, but it's ambiguous to me, it just, I find it to be quite attractive. And um, it's composed nicely enough so that your eye does, does land that half a focal point, but it just kind of moves around and it's just it's really this is this one, two, three, four shapes. But within each shape, there's a lot going on. Um, Strong, very, very strong painting. So where once there was, so maybe it was that. Maybe it is some kind of recycling or garbage dump. It doesn't really matter. Next. You know, just an exceptionally well painted painting. I mean, um, doing these kind of deep reds as anyone who's tried it knows, it, it's very, very difficult to do. But what's partly exceptional about this painting is the light creates this diagonal and um, through the, through the from upper right down to the left, you know, carried through with the shadows, you know, because in a way it's, it's symmetrical because you've got these two things and the one in the middle, but because of that strong diagonal and just again, the simple background really makes these, uh, makes these uh, jump out. 
I also have to, a special shout out to Robin. Um, she helped me a lot making this, getting this show ready. And I, she deserves a lot of applause. Um, so thank you very much, Robin. I hope you're watching. Um, next. You know, I, I talked about flowers sometimes just being, um, you know, omnipresent in a lot of these exhibits. But when you do something that's a little extra special, they really stand out. And this one, there's just the color is just luscious. But also just the way she didn't show the whole shot, the whole flower, it really kind of got abstracted with a little bit of the background. Um, but just beautiful lighting on this one. It's, um, you know, one of, one of the things I enjoy painting the most are things that are white because of all of the, the bounce of light. And this one just, you know, it, it's, it's kind of a white flower, but uh, it, it really shows that white really isn't white usually. This is really a nicely, nicely, beautifully painted painting. Uh, next. Yeah, well, you know, the funny thing, I looked at this one a few times and I, just, I, I, I went by it because I thought, well, I know the composition isn't exceptional. And then I started looking at it more and realized, no, that's a pretty, pretty sophisticated composition. Um, again, uh, portraits, I mean, the, the, her face is just absolutely exceptional. But then I started looking at all the patterning and the um, in her costume and that strong right fist going up. Um, it has this wonderful diagonal with that flower going up as, as kind of a counterpoint. And just again, some kind of a, it tells a story that um, we don't all often hear. And it's, uh, it's really a strong painting. I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad it's in the show because it really de deserves it. Uh, next. Yeah, well, here we go with patterns again. I mean, you could actually, um, again, print this one out in black and white and it would still be just as, as effective. Um, it has that wonderful tropical landscape feel to it, even without the color. But the addition of, again, did I mention earlier about the turquoise blue against some, with a little bit of orange? I mean, I had to tell you, I hadn't noticed that until I started going through these. It's like, there is a, there's some real excitement, but that orange, the light comes through because of that cool turquoise next to it. And just the water down there is really, really, really beautifully painted. But I think it's partly just the movement through this painting um, going from that the turquoise leaves kind of create with those verticals there at the background that really create a, so a number of interesting shapes and just wonderful colors. Um, I didn't know the, who the, I was going to go. I'll just say, when I, when I was at Canuga several years ago, um, Joe was one of my cabin mates, and I didn't know, realize this was his painting. So if he's watching, great painting, Joe. Uh, next. Uh, so these flamingos, you know, it, it, it seems so kind of arbitrary. Oh, they just kind of painted some, some flamingos. Actually, I had a chance to, Rebecca was, was in my uh, one, one and ones last week. So we talked a little bit more about this painting. Um, it's a very sophisticated composition. And I mentioned earlier sometimes how you make things sharp by putting things that are soft behind it. Well, they really jump out because that background, which is just like a, a work of art in and of itself, um, they really stand out. But there, there's a certain circular dance happening between these all, all these flamingos that um, it keeps 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 my eye moving through the painting, uh, and they're just exceptionally well painted. But it's the background I think that really really sold me on this painting. Uh, next. You know, sometimes um, there are paintings that are just so um, unusual, or if the colors are unusual, they, they, they catch your eye. And this was, this was one of them. And then I started looking at it more carefully. And it really is, you know, it's a little bit of that concept of just letting watercolor flow and let do its own thing. Um, I mean, the wonderful use of wet and wet and just kind of splashing the paint down. Um, I just sometimes just love that kind of simple energy without 
um, trying to be, you know, make everything look so represent highly representational. You get some really wonderful effects with watercolor. And this one really caught my eye. Uh, next. <laughs> you know, th th there are a few still lifes in the show. And, um, and you know, we've seen, we've seen a lot of still lifes over the years. This I thought was one of the most beautifully painted still lifes I've ever seen. Um, and just it was just a fantastic idea. Um, I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not a boot person, but um, I thought each one has a little personality and it really, um, really kind of you know, great colors. And that background just, make, again, just makes them just jump out. Um, so, so, so sometimes when I'm looking at these things, I'm looking for kind of a novel idea. And this is, was definitely, I thought, a very, very novel idea and just wonderfully painted. Um, next. Well, I mentioned patterns before, and it was the patterning of these palm fronds that really caught my eye. And just the, the subtle color changes within each one that really just kind of, there's something really kind of sensuous about the way that they, that they, they move. Um, I'm not quite sure what broken means, but maybe it does to the, uh, to the painter. But just a wonderful, wonderful movement through this entire painting. Uh, next. <laughs> well, I have to admit, this one caught my eye. I'd never seen um, a pair of uh, still life, again, going back to still lives, with staples and nails. And, and I figured there had to be a story to this one. I'm good. I thought the the title helps me a little bit, but why are they damaged? I'm not, not really sure. Um, beyond the nails and the staples, it is just beautifully painted with that little uh, that diagonal of black and white going through uh, in the background. And just the texture, especially the one on the left with the nails, is just really, really fantastic. I, um, it's definitely set itself apart though. I, I'm quite not quite sure. <laughs> I'd like to hear a little bit more about uh, the idea behind this, because I'm sure there's a story behind this that I just can't quite figure out. I also really want to point out the shadows that they're casting. It just goes to show that you can, shadows are not black or gray. They, they, there's so much wonderful bounce light. And this, these are really exceptionally well done. A little bit of the red in that shadow and the green, you know, on the one on the left. Really beautifully done. Uh, next. Well, I think I mentioned earlier that I'm a little partial to water subjects. And this one I thought was such an exceptionally well done painting of, of water reflections. And, but that's not enough to get into a show. It caught my eye for sure. But it was the quality of the light. And you, you know this is early morning light and everything is kind of reflecting that kind of purple blue, I mean the, the pink uh, that you often get in the morning time. And just the, the boats themselves, I thought, were just wonderfully painted as well. But it's also a beautiful composition. You got your, you know, there, there's some movement from that um, pier on the, on, the, on, the, on the right and going over to the, the one on the left. Um, and just kind of your eye just kind of dances around. And, but the water is really ex exceptional. Uh, next. Yeah, one of the, I thought, one of the more beautiful paintings in the entire show. Um, even without the green hair in there, this would have just been a delightful painting. Um, just, I, I love it sometimes when the stories are told with reflections as opposed to um, just kind of spelling everything out. I mean, the leaves at the top, but the, but the green hair in itself, I mean, just look at the, how, carefully it's painted and beautifully it's painted. It helps kind of work as a focal point in your my eye that then dances around, but it really was primarily for me, those reflections at the bottom that really, um, really sold me on this painting. I thought it was quite unusual. Just to look at the, I mean, just looking at the pattern of that reflection is really, is really gorgeous and beautifully, co beautiful, beautiful colors in it as well. Uh, next. 
Okay, another wonderful bike painting. And again, it was a little bit unusual. He didn't, you know, show the whole thing. And it was, so even if he turned this one upside down sideways, it would work as a painting. Um, but I think it was partly just, uh, you know, the old rust, or maybe without rust, maybe it is orange, but um, it just felt like an old bike. But again, it, and, and I'm really partial to shadows and bikes and this create beautiful shadows. And this one was, Look again, he, he cropped things in certain ways, so he didn't show the whole thing. I mean, there's that one circle in the middle, but then all the other, the other circles get kind of broken up. Um, and, and wonderful colors. Uh, next. Yeah, again, one of my beautiful, well, favorite paintings. Um, I, I really want to know more. I, I'm not sure what Pedro means. I really want to know more about this one. I, I stared at this one for quite a while, trying to figure out exactly what was going on. I love it. You know, there, there's a danger sometimes putting letters in paintings because they can attract a lot of attention. But the way these are done is that they're, 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 they're abstracted such that they, yeah, we know they're letters, but they're not really saying much. But the um, area, the, how to describe it, behind the, behind the, uh, um, behind the bird, there's this, this wonderful set, set of patterns. And it's just a, such a strong composition. In a way, it's symmetrical, but it has so much energy. I usually avoid symmetry, but um, and I think it's partly the bird there in the middle, uh, in the foreground, that makes it work. And that wonderful blue turquoise, I think, again, turquoise and orange, I mentioned that earlier. I hadn't really thought about it until I, maybe it's a, maybe it's a Florida thing, but... Um, it's really quite exceptional. Uh, next. <laughs> Again, sometimes a, just a novel idea just goes, goes a long way. Plus it's just so incredibly strong graphically. Um, I'm not sure what the butterfly does, but it, it, it adds a lot. And again, it's, this is very symmetrical, but, um, but I think intentionally so. And the reflection of the upper stuff is just, uh, it's really, really wonderfully done. It's so strong, such a strong graphic. Uh, next. And this is a painting that I have to admit, I, when I first looked at it, I thought oh, it was beautifully done, but what does it do? What does it tell? And then and I went through a few more times, I looked at it more carefully and it's like, huh, I really want to know more game what this story is. And I think there is, um, there, there, there's a real message here that, um, that missed me the first time I went, went by it. And um, sometimes it's, it's difficult to, you know, have a, have a message in your painting. Sometimes it's really heavy handed, but this was really, really subtle. And I think it's, uh, um, it's really quite, but it's also, it's also quite beautifully painted. I mean, just that, that string down there below is really wonderfully done and the, and the nest as well and a very, very simple background. So it just it really kind of stands out. Um, next. Yeah, I think you're beginning to think, notice that I, I, I look at patterns a lot. And this one um, doesn't really matter what the subject is, but um, it's just a wonderful arrangement of shade, shadow, and pattern. Um, I mean, the background, look at the background carefully, if you can see it, it's really, really beautifully done. Very limited palette. I mean, do I have to say it again? Turquoise, blue, and kind of orange. Um, but it's also, the, it, I think part of the, that, that is that color temperature excitement that you get when you have a warm color and a cool color, a blue against an orange. Um, and I, I love the subtlety of this, but it really is just that black and white pattern going through the whole thing that really, um, I mean, you can see the background of mine, <laughs> speaking of, lots of stripes and black patterns, but anyway, uh, next. I thought that was absolutely a delightful painting when I saw those ones. Some, sometimes when I'm looking at these, it's like just when I see a freshly wa painted watercolor uh, of really kind of a mundane scene, um, they, when, they're, when they're really well done, and I think that there's some of the strongest paintings, and this one was certainly one of them. I mean, the rocks are beautiful. He painted beautifully. The water is painted beautifully. And there's that tension of him. There's the diagonal path, path of water going through that he's kind of crossing that really created a certain amount, amount of tension. 
I also particularly liked the fact that the upper right hand corner is almost lost the, and w which helps kind of define the parts that are more uh, more important in the painting, the figure and the rocks and the water. Uh, next. Well, this was one of the more evocative portraits I, uh, I saw. And, um, you know, sometimes these very quiet paintings get lost in, in an exhibition, ones that don't have like tons of contrast, but there is so much um, feeling in this particular painting. And, and again, I just love parts of it's defined, parts of it's not defined. It really is just a, a series of shapes and just so freshly painted. It's not labored at all. It's, it's kind of an, it's, it, it's a little deceptive. It seems kind of simple, but actually if you start looking at it more carefully, there's actually quite a bit of movement throughout the whole painting. Um, a fantastic portrait. Uh, next. Yeah. yeah. Well, I have to admit, I, I, I'm still a little bit mystified by this title because I, it's one of my, I know this church, I would never have guessed, put it with this. So I'm going to just talk about this. Uh, maybe Steve can explain to me at some point what he had in, had in mind with the title. It is just absolutely exceptionally well painted. I mean, it's just one of those abstracts that I could stare at for, for forever. Um, the upper left corner, um, it's almost like an eye coming through. It's, it's got just some wonderful textures and patterns and just a wonderful arrangement of color. Um, maybe, it, maybe there's a church in there. I don't really see it, but I'll, I'll, I'll take his word for it. Um, uh, next. Yeah, see, I'm, this is just an absolutely um, exceptional arrangement of shapes. And then within those shapes, within the light areas, there's all of this wonderful texturing. I mean, the title stress fracture, I guess kind of says something and, and it does kind of have that feeling of things that are kind of broken up. Um, but again, just, you know, you got that very geometric background and then you've got these free flowing spaces, shapes within it. Um, I think it's really, um, really quite, quite attractive, not attractive, but just very drawn, it really draws me in. Um, next. Yeah, this, this, here, here's some florals that, that really stood out to me. And I, you know, it, it, it's partly just they're extremely well painted at lit. But I have to tell you the truth, what really uh, attracted to me was the background. <laughs> and sometimes it really, you know, the thing about light and shadows, you need shadow to have light. Well, sometimes you need to have um, a subject matter with, with, with a background that kind of adds something to it. And um, it, the flowers are, are great, but I, I could stare at those leaves forever and ever. That, that's really what attracts me to this particular this particular painting. I mean, the, the flowers are beautifully done as well, but I, I don't want to downplay them, but uh, I really love the background. And, and just, again, you, you squint your eye, turn this upside down backwards, and it would work. It's, it's got this wonderful balance throughout the painting. Uh, next. Yeah, this one should be side by side with the uh, with the red slipper from earlier. Again, a, a very very novel idea, and um, on the ro pepper on the rocks. So of course, that's what it is. And to be truthful, when I was looking at this, I hardly even saw that that it was pepper. It was more like a, a red shape to me because this is such an unusual, just a strong graphic. And what really caught my eye though was the patterning in the glass itself, uh, the black and white lines and what happens when, they, when they're in a glass. I mean, it is a glass and, and the wonderful reflections down below. Um, and again, it's very symmetrical, but that red pepper really just kind of uh, makes the whole painting um, very, very strong. Uh, next. 
Yeah, that's, you know, sometimes when there's something that's just very, very mundane and someone does an exceptional job, it really catches, catches my eye when I'm during a show. And this was one of them. I mean, it's just a bunch of leaves that are on the ground. But look at all these wonderful textures. I mean, again, if you, I know they're leaves, but it's a, an abstract painting. Um, it really is. And it's, the, it's all of those patterns and colors within the leaves that really make it attractive. But, but I think it really, because when I'm doing these, I, I squint my eyes sometimes. And this, it was just had, had just a wonderful balance of shapes throughout the whole painting. Um, next. Well, I, I have to admit, I, when I first saw this one, I, I thought, oh, she's copying someone, the show, the painting that I saw at the AWS catalog, you know, that won top prize. And so I went and looked at the name and thought, oh, because I, I, I could look at names if I had to and said, oh, same person. That makes a lot of sense. This is such a great, fantastic idea. And uh, it sounds like, it looks like she's doing a series of them. Um, I mean, I've gone to many of these festivals and I'm always amazed by these artists. And, um, but, but doing the paintings featuring, and then look at all the texture, wonderful texture in her shawl, in her scarf and sh uh, shawl. Um, it, it's just got wonderful movement throughout the painting the, and those diagonals that up there in the uh, upper part of the painting. Um, but really it's one of those self-referential kind of things when you uh, are just doing art, I think is a, and this is a very novel way of doing it. Uh, my hats are off to her. Uh, next. Wow, what a beautiful painting. Um, the, again, these are just some leaves. You know, they're, they're, they're some, these are not flashy flowers, but it just kind of, I think, also just demonstrates how a simple subject can really be um, um, very successful. It's partly, it's those reds that make the greens jump out and the green and vice versa. Um, and again, look at the soft background and make the sharpness of the leaves really jump out. But I think it's really that diagonal of leaves going from left to right and down that, um, and then you got those verticals in the background that kind of add some more extra excitement. It really is a very sophisticated composition. Uh, next. Yeah, here's another great, wonderful pattern. Um, again, it's nothing exceptional as, as far as the subject goes, but it just, I think, goes to show how powerful an arrangement of shapes can be. And because I think ultimately it's the composition that, that really makes things work or not work. Um, and this one, just the, the, light against dark, there's other stories going on in this one. That the, on the far left side, the, that branch I think is just absolutely exceptional. But these leaves within themselves have so much light and really just, they really jump out. Uh, and I, I love the fact that they're off balance and, and really create kind of a dynamic composition. Uh, next. <laughs> Yeah, this is a painting, but there's a story here. And I'm not sure um, what it is, but I, I, want to, I want to know her, whoever she is. She just seems like quite a character. And, you know, but that's not enough to, for a painting to be in a show, right? There's a, there's a story here, which is really, really strong. But it's also just, oh, look at all those, it's a wonderful, I mean, she's off. I don't know what, what all this means on the left-hand side, but there's, there's this tension between her and, and the background that I think really make this um, incredibly strong. And just this, this is use of pattern. And there, you know, there, there are symbols here that, I, that I, I don't know, but it, it doesn't really matter. But it's, that, it's partly just, and then they have that green shawl with the, with the butterflies on it and the wonderful flower in her hat. Um, but it's also just, I, I won't go too much into what I think about the composition because it really is deceptively simple. It really is quite strong. And I, I, I mean, the butterfly on the, on the paintbrush, I, um, really, really fantastic. My, my hat's off. Uh, next. Yeah, this one, I mean, 
maybe I like turquoise blue, but it is, this is a really, I don't know how to, how to, how to source my feeling about this one. I, I, I find it, um, there's something that's jarring about it and I'm not quite sure why, what, what I mean by jarring. I mean, it works very beautifully as an abstract, but there's something about it. Maybe it's the, the character, you know, you don't see the person and they got those blue legs. I don't know. It, it's just, but when a painting kind of affects you, affects you emotionally and brings in um, some kind of feelings that you're not sure about, it's a painting worth looking at even more and more and more. And this one was one of those. I kept looking at it and um, it's, it, it tells a big story and I'm not quite sure what it is, um, but it's really, really fantastic. Uh, next. Yeah, here's another wonderful still life. And, you know, when I first looked at it, I thought, okay, this is good. And then you look at it more carefully and you're like, oh, this is really good. Um, you know, you know there, there's just so beautiful element, elements in it, like the fan in the background. But what, what a wonderful, I mean, it's a, sometimes a novel idea, you know, that, that angelfish is, <laughs> I think that's what it's called, um, on the right-hand side, just it, its curve is reflected in the, in the fan, which is reflected in that blue um, object, whatever that is. And you've got this funny little glass polar bear, I would assume. I've got the wonderful, wonderful curve of the cats. So um, it, uh, it, it's really well, it's not just a simple arrangement of shapes and it's beautifully well painted. That, that black background makes, makes the light really kind of turn on. Uh, next. Uh, again, one of those paintings that was, was so evocative. Um, I uh, really want to I mean, just look at the quality of the light in this one it, and just the use of hard and soft edges, very limited palette. So why does it work? And it, it works incredibly well, partly just because it's the arrangement of the shapes, those dark, those dark shapes, and you lose some of the edges. You've got a great diagonal going through it. Um, and it's just kind of ha also just has a mood to it. And I think that sometimes paintings that have some kind of I mean, initial mood or emotion to them, um, it, it's hard to do well. And it's when it's done, when it's successful, it's, it's uh, very, 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 adds a lot to a painting. Uh, next, uh, the deck. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. It, it, I talked earlier about breaking things into shapes. Yeah, it's a duck. You could all turn this one upside down, sideways, and it would still work. The duck, duck kind of holds things together, but to me, it's it's all it's all of the things in the background, those wonderful, wonderful, wonderful shapes, that force you to imagine, forces your brain to fill in all of the gaps. And I think that's part of the, what I like about kind of impressionist work in general is that it engages the viewer. It every, not everything is spelled out. And I mean, on top of it, it's just a beautiful composition, but it's just a wonderful, wonderful arrangement of shapes. And um, just, yeah, there's another little duckling down there that's kind of cute, but it really is just the, um, yeah, a fantastic composition. Well, going, on the birds, you know, here, here's another example of something that is so simple, seemingly so simple. And, um, but it has so much movement because of that diagonal of, created by the birds and then the counterpoint of the legs going the other direction. And so it's, it's, it, this is very difficult to do. Um, successfully because it, you move one little thing and it's and it changes a lot you don't have a whole lot of leeway and um, I thought this was just really exceptional the little uh, red flex and again a very 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 simple background uh, next <laughs> well here's another example of a still life I thought this was quite quite fun um, again kind of a novel idea a little bit like the cowboy boots um, and each one of these cows has a certain personality. It's also just beautifully 
beautifully painted, and there's a there's a wonderful movement in throughout the, throughout the painting. Um, and I think it's that one guy in the background who was, the, um, I, don't know if, I don't know if it's a bull or not, but uh, the big guy, he was just kind of, they all kind of rotate around. Um, but I just love the colors within um, those dark shapes. It's really easy for those darks to, to be, become kind of muddy and they, they really vibrate here. Uh, next. Yeah, it's great these are actually juxtaposed here. I mean, here's another example of something very similar, but boy, what a composition. I mean, just there's so much movement here. I mean, even without the incredible application of the paint, the colors here, I mean, this is really, I mean, the, the shapes here just really kind of move around. Um, but it, it's the application and the color that, that's that been used here. I, I see some more turquoise and orange here. Um, but um, though, especially the one, for me anyway, the one on the right hand side is just, I mean, it, it could be a painting in and of itself. I, I just love people who have the freedom to, the thing is if you get your values right, they're gonna work. And this is something I always say, is, and you can use any colors you want to, um, as long as you get the values correct. And I think this, I mean, this is why these spaces work. Um, because she's very sensitive to color temperature and complementary colors. But on top of it all, it's just an exciting composition. Uh, next. Yeah, well, you know, he, Vlad calls his old cars. I, I didn't know this was Vlad's painting when I was judging. Um, but for me, it was that the upper buildings, <laughs> they're just, um, an architectural tour de force. I, I, I'm, yeah, the cars are nice, but boy, those buildings are fantastic. But this is, you know, the, the, there weren't too many, interestingly enough, too many streetscapes um, entered. And this was one of them. But I, I mean, the mastery of the application of the paint is just exceptional. And um, the use of light, um, yeah, it's really very, very, very strong uh, streetscape. Yeah, wonderful stuff. Um, and this one is also just a great, great example of wonderful pat patterns that are created. Um, and it's, 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 if you just look at the, at the subject, at the blossoms, it's like, it's okay, but then you start looking at everything else. And so, so what is it? Well, when I'm looking at these things, I, the, there's usually a, a, an initial reaction and I wasn't sure what it was, but the more I looked at it, I think it is the, it's those background shapes and the shapes of the overall painting. Again, this is one you can turn upside down, sideways, and it would still work. Um, so it's, I think this one succeeds mostly in my mind, the strength of the composition. I do love over there on the, on the right hand side, all, all of those little colors and a few little reds that make those greens really kind of um, stand out. Plus also just notice that black element in the background that kind of ties the whole painting together. Uh, next. Next. Oh, I think we're going to the award winners now, right? Uh, yeah, actually, before I, before I say, um, go on with these, and let me just say that the following paintings that won awards, um, there, as I think you may have seen in, in the other paintings, there were so many that, that were deserving of awards. It was very difficult to, to narrow down the ones that I really wanted and um, or felt were worthy of awards. And most of these, there's some kind of emotional reaction on my part more than, you know, than and so in some ways it's very subjective. It could have been some of the other paintings. That's not to take away the full ones that gave, gave awards because these are all, I think, exceptional paintings. So next. So this is one I guess Cheap Joe chose, but it's really, um, again, people who have the temperament and just ability to paint cut glass and make it look so excitingly vibrant is really, I mean, look at those balls at the top. They're just really fat. It's really incredibly well painted. It's just, and also just a wonderful arrangement of shapes. 
uh, next. And I guess the healing arts chose this one. This one, this one was always one of my faves. Um, I, again, I'm from California. We don't have too many coconut trees, so it's always fun to see coconuts up in the trees. But the look, just look at this wonderful arrangement of shapes, looking up into the tree as opposed to just, you know, just showing a tree. Sometimes it really is just a matter, or part of it is just choosing a vantage point that's new and unique and then making that, it's a, but by in and of itself, it's not enough. But then making that into this wonderful, I mean, those wonderful diagonals that are created by the fronds. And then you've got the coconuts that kind of anchor everything together. And just wonderful, beautiful colors. Uh, next. Yeah, this one was, again, I, I, I love painting water. And... Um, Whenever I was going through all the slides, my eye just kept coming back to this one. So I looked at it really carefully. I couldn't figure out what the deal was because I thought, is it just the water? But no, it's just, it's, it's the very sophisticated composition and just wonderful expression of this person out on a, I guess it's, a, I don't know if it's a boat or a canoe, I can't really tell. I'm not a boater. And that red oar, um, there's just this wonderful movement but I also have to say, if you look, if, as someone who loves to paint water, the water in this is really just um, so well done. Um, and again, it's so, seemingly so simple, but it tells a story and it really, uh, really, really caught my eye. Uh, next. Yeah, yeah. Talk about wonderful movement. Um, yeah, it's a koi up there, but to me, this is just a, and, and it has water. And then the more I looked at it, I, I realized what you're seeing is you're looking just straight down onto the water and you see the fish just below the water and those are all the ripples. But you know what? It doesn't, when I, first, I looked at this painting, it was just these wonderful swirling, a wonderful movement. I, I'm not quite sure how, how this person did this. Um, and then the fish just kind of helps anchor the whole painting together, but it really is just that wonderful, incredible movement. And the fact that I now know better what it is um, adds, adds even more to the painting. I mean, it's not just totally random. It's really, really beautifully done. Um, next. <laughs> yeah, I, I couldn't help myself. This one, I just absolutely loved the first moment I saw it. Um, again, maybe it's my attraction to portraits, I'm not sure, but um, just all of the wonderful, incredible patterning within each one of these dolls. Um, they are, it is really, um, r really fun. I mean, in some ways it's, it's like the, th the three graces I mentioned earlier. I mean, these, there are these three that are kind of um, in more focus than the ones in the background, very, a very subtle difference. But, and the one on the right-hand side kind of staring at you. Um, but just uh, just really, again, a very unique idea and just something I, I, had, I had never seen before. And um, when you start looking closely, you realize how well-painted it is as well. Uh, next. Well, here's a composition um, with flamingos that is really, really exceptional the and look at the and the you know this this is i think something that i really admire is people who can take objects and integrate them into a painting so that yeah you recognize the objects but they really are just a part of this whole abstract composition i mean if you look at the center of the painting it's just this wonderful arrangement of shapes and colors I mean, do I see some turquoise and orange again? But you know, it's it's, it's that um, it's just jumps. But it's really the arrangement of those pelican necks and heads that um, really tie the whole painting together. I thought, and I love the imbalance and just the wonderful textures in the background. Um, I mean, if you look at the lower left hand side. Uh, the bird begins to kind of fall apart a little bit, which is great. And because it makes the, the sharp part of their heads stand out even more. Uh, next. 
Well, this one was quite topical, um, sadly, and I guess it's the reason why we're doing this virtually. But um, I actually thought this was a doctor when I first was, it, was looking at him, but I, I just loved the simplicity of this portrait and just the, because of the mask and just the focusing on the eyes. These eyes tell so much of a story and just, you know, I, I mean, I'm going to be 65 in a couple of weeks, so I was kind of looking at all those wrinkles. Um, and uh, I just, but again, do I, uh, I want to play turquoise and orange again? Um, it uh, seems to be, was that the Miami Vice colors? Um, but uh, it's really, and just exceptionally well painted. And just to, again, by, by cropping a head or any object, you tell a story without showing everything, which I think always leaves something to the imagination. And here it just really focuses the attention on really what the story is about. Um, I think I mentioned before, there are short stories, paintings are short stories, and you have room for lots of subplots. And um, by just focusing on that one single plot makes it for a very, very strong painting. Uh, next. Yeah. Again, wrinkles. I don't know. I mean, but this is not just simple a painting of wrinkles. It's just, it's a painting of these wonderful shapes. I mean, he's got this incredibly um, emotional. I don't know um, face that just uh, caught my eye every time I went through this one. Um, it, it, again, not, not showing the whole head, just kind of, sh you know, really focusing it on, focusing on the eyes and, and just the, the years behind that face. Uh, next. Yeah, well, this one, I think, you know, um, Vermeer or Rembrandt would have uh, been proud of. I mean, just the incredible um, light and uh, I don't know, the, the, the face, the whole object, the, pant, the, the woman is just, I'm not sure what, you know, it's funny, it's titled Tumultuous, but to me this was so serene. Um, I'm not quite sure what that means, but the eyes. But what's also quite daring about this particular painting is that the object is not, the background is more square inches than the object is. And um, which really kind of makes her feel like she's a little bit isolated. So maybe that's what, what was going on. But beyond the story, it's um, just just a tour de force as far as a as far as a portrait goes, um, with the, with that red scarf and just wonderful lighting, just some wonderful lighting. Uh, next, oh um, yeah, one of my favorite abstracts. I, I'm not sure what Lunar has to do with it, but um, I just loved the arrangement of, of shapes here, especially down the, the lower part. I know my eye just keeps dancing around the whole painting and I could stare at this one for hours and hours and hours. Um, I, I can't really explain what it is, but sometimes, and I'm sure everyone's had that experience, some painting just kind of um, attracts your eye and really speaks to you. And this one de was definitely one of them. Um, really, really, really a beautiful painting. Uh, next. Well, you know, we talked about patterns and a part of that pattern sometimes is, um, is repetition and repetition when used correctly can really help or order your painting, I guess you could say, but you know, because there's a lot of patterning going on here, but by having those one, two, again, my three graces, um, it really unifies the whole painting. But then, then you look at the background and the background and the time. There, there a lot of thought and work went into creating this, this piece of this painting and repeating patterns and repeating elements. Um, just it's, and you don't look at their faces, but they got this one, two, three. It's really, really, really wonderfully done. Uh, next. Well, here was one of the other streetscapes that really I I just loved the sense of light in this particular painting. Um, it's got I love the the limited palette. Again, it, it calls back to some of the things we looked at earlier that really broke things down into shapes. And it's just always 
again, leaves something to the imagination when everything is not totally spelt, spelt out. And it's just this wonderful arrangement of forms that in addition to that, uh, tells a story. But I thought this palette was just uh, outstanding, these grays with just a few little bit of the golds. Um, and I mean, just, it's just fantastic. The, the buildings in the, for me anyway, the buildings on the upper left background, I think is just exceptionally exceptional. Uh, next. Yeah, I, I didn't know who, who the painter was, was at this one, but when I now know that it was um, Shi Wo, I was like, I, I've had a chance to see some of her originals before. And she just has it a gift for painting foliage um, in such a, you know, it's realistic, but there's always a mood to, the, to her paintings. There's a certain, I don't know, melancholy sometimes even. But, the, but, but, but this one, the way the light kind of hits that fern and the pot, it just and another kind of soft background. I mean, kind of like the Mona Lisa background um, really makes the fern stand out. But just the incredible attention to detail is just, um, is just really phenomenal. Uh, next, again, just a pattern. I mean, this is a pattern I could I could stare at for hours and hours and hours. Um, I, I I would be curious to know how he conceived of this. Um, it's perhaps it was based on a photo, but I don't really you know it doesn't matter. It's just a very attractive arrangement of shapes, and there's so much going on in this painting. But I think it's those those pots that kind of you know hold it together. But you know the the foreground is just absolutely gorgeous. Um, I, I, I'm sure this is not an easy thing to do. I, I would no idea. I have no idea how to do this. But um, really, a lot of thought and I'm beautifully painted. Uh, next, yeah, this is you know I, I, back to back to painting birds, but. This one, I thought, um, even though it's a bird, it's it's just an incredible painting. The um, the bird is kind of tied into the background; it's got different colors, but it's just this wonderful um, use of watercolor, really. And the bird itself, it, it, its shapes are just quite unique. It's got that kind of ovoid shape and that meat coming straight down with those legs. I think it's that diagonal that helps make it kind of um, really, really sing for me. But it is that use of that background and just the wonderful free freedom of the painting, of seemingly free painting that, uh, that we see that really attracted my eye. Uh, next. Yeah, well, here's a, another tour de force. Um, I mean, I, Dean is one of my favorite paintings in the country. As it turns out, I didn't know it was his. Um, there's just so much wonderful things happening in this particular painting that was, I'll just name a few. I mean, it was the laundry line that really first caught my eye and the sheets over those bikes over there. And of course the character did, the figure did too. And the street scene on the far, far right side is, it's so seemingly simple, simple, but it's very, there's a, there's a lot going on here. This is a really kind of daring composition to have that long horizontal, but it's because then you have the figure kind of crossing and that pole behind her. Um, but probably more than anything, uh, more than anything, there's lots of things. It, it's the light and the, the, the shadows on that building that are being cast. Um, you know, we have, the, we've got that strong horizontal, but it's those strong diagonals that really kind of help to excite the painting. Um, and then you got that, you know, air conditioner fan there on the upper left-hand corner. Um, and, and beyond all of that, it tells a story. It paints a picture of a scene, I guess, in Shanghai that, um, could only be in Shanghai. Really beautiful painting. Uh, next. Yeah, I don't know. This one really grabbed me. Um, I, 
it's partly the expression on her face, which I think was, which was my first reaction. It's that, it's that red. But it's also just the beautiful way she has been simplified. I mean, look, if you look at the far left side, for example, she, she, she begins to get lost a little bit, which brings that attention, that sharpness to her face. Um, it's got this wonderful triangular composition that's off-center, um, a very simple, simple background. But I think ultimately for me, it's, it's that arrangement of her face, arm, and hand working together, which kind of tells a story. Um, I, I didn't realize, I, I didn't see the pomegranate before, but I, I saw something red in her hand, but I didn't know what, quite what it was, it didn't really matter. But um, really a, a painting with a lot of feeling behind it. Well, we talked earlier about p pattern, and this one is a great example of that. Um, I have to admit, I, I, I gr actually grew up in Southern California in orange orchards, playing around in orange orchards. So this one kind of had a, has had some special resonance for me. But you know, that's not enough to to win to win an award, let alone you know, be in the show, let alone win an award. But it's um, Frank has a very exceptional ability to paint citrus, and um, it makes you really want to uh, bite in. But it's also just so so very very carefully composed, kind of a classical composition. And it's really that one green. I don't know if it's a lemon or a lime or whatever it is there in the middle that really kind of everything rotates around. This is really a painting. I thought about rotation and movement. Um, so it was you know it had a story behind it, and it was also just extremely well painted and just wonderfully wonderfully composed. Um, and I have to admit, because it speaks to me as well. Um, next one. Yeah, well, as, uh, as you may have gleaned, I, uh, I'm, uh, I'm a real fan of shadows. And um, actually, Canaletto once said, or it, was, uh, it could be apocryphal, that it's all in the shadows, that you can actually define so much of, of, of an object or, uh, by its shadows. And this one had just had just this wonderful, I don't know, it, it evokes some kind of, I, I've been here before, some place, you know, it's Bernat's I didn't even notice that. Um, you know, some place it, with Italian light and just, it's such a simple graphic, like, graphic composition and just this wonderful use of color going from the um, kind of purplish pinks, maroons to the green. I mean, that green awning just, Makes it makes the paint really painting really vibrate, and it's also very carefully com composed so that it just doesn't quite, you know, it, it's not hitting you over the head with like I'm a triangle, but it's really kind of got this wonderful sense of movement through the whole painting. Um, it was a bit of a sleeper when I was going through it, and, I, and the more I looked at it, I just really fell in love um, with this painting. It's it's just got this incredible sense of light. Um, I, I can go on and on about it, but. Um, it, it really is, it really is a special painting. Uh, next. This one has so much mystery to me To I mean, it's got, it's got so many things going on with it that I think is, is so strong. You could just look at it as an arrangement of shapes and it's quite exciting. Um, with that background that kind of sets her off. I mean, I think as a woman, um, that's how I thought of it anyway. But I love the way that she kind of gets integrated into that wall on the right-hand side. Um, again, I think you could turn this one upside down, right? And it's just got this a wonderful sense of just mystery and just, um, it's just an incredible painting. I just, I, I still can't, whenever I look at it, I just can't get over just how wonderful it is. Um, I mean, I love the fact, you know, usually, you know, the, the, those little, uh, the wall on, on the left-hand side, the, 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 that angle with, with some turquoise, I don't see too much orange. Um, and, and the bottom, anyway, it's, 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 it's just such a strong, strong painting. And very, very evocative. Um, next one. Well, I, I did have the opportunity to meet Lina last week doing one-on-ones. You know, when you go through a paint, when you first look at 618 slides, um, there are a few paintings that usually catch your attention. And 
this one did big time and um there's something and i kept you know going through i kept looking at it looking at it, why why what is it about this partly i think it's it's just the overall thing here here's a blackboard and this and this kid and so what's what, what's going on he's leaning up against the wall it's partly the expression on his face he is looks a little impatient i mean waiting for teacher kind of tells me a little bit of the story but i couldn't tell if he was mad or just like bored or what but so i think that was the first thing and then there's a little bit so all of this stuff on the blackboard and um and that slouch it's just the more i looked at this painting and it's still today i think it is just absolutely a tour de force um it's i think also because that is how just a simple idea can 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 be so powerful in a painting rather than trying to put you know everything into it um he and if you look at the background i mean in a way it's kind of symmetrical but because of his leaning um it throws all of that kind of symmetry off and um i, I just um my hat's off to Lina. I think it's really, really a fantastic painting. And it's just got this wonderful, fresh application of paint. It's not overworked. It's just um, everything, to me, for me anyway, everything was perfect. Um, I can still keep looking at him. And um, he, he's probably just, he's a very sympathetic character. And uh, I would like to, I hope the teacher comes. Anyway, um, Congratulations, Lina. It was a great painting. Well, let's see if we have any questions. There are very few, and some of them dealt with some previous things. Let's see if we have any for Michael. Um, someone was referring to a particular artist that's the subject of this painting and said they'd passed away September 4th of the year, but didn't say which painting it was. Um, oh. The only real comment we have is that it's really great to see each painting and hear Michael's thoughts on what makes each so strong. It's a great learning experience and he's so thoughtful in his evaluation. So, but other than that, there were no particular questions and answers, just some bravos for your slugging your way through 618 paintings and then doing such a thoughtful talk on all on the 100 of them today so we thank you for that michael very much well i many thanks to you terry when you first told me what we were going to be doing last may i thought this was going to be quite um quite a challenge but it, it's actually it turns out to be quite a quite enjoyable it would be nice to meet you in person but um and everyone yeah. else in person i'm here but, hopefully and to be able to, to see these paintings in person not to mention the artists um and maybe that'll happen at some point but uh but all the same, I, I really want to emphasize how delightful this has been for me. And uh, it, uh, it's always, you know, it's, it's kind of a cornucopia of riches when I have to jury these shows and look at art, beautiful artwork all day long. So uh, oh, we you hope you can make it to Florida sometime soon and see the flamingos in real life. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it seems like there's lots of bird life in uh, in Florida, but I just... Uh, there there um, really are. There really is. And they're all, they tend to be large and they strut through your, you know, yards and stick their nose in your driveway to see and into your garage to see what you're doing. And when they're three or four foot tall, they can be a little intimidating. Right. <laughs>